Alright, so, I uh, I thought I'd do a little response video to a CGP Grey video. Um, now, a little bit of background about me in case you, you are not familiar with who I am. I am No Thank You. I have uh, autism. I uh, am a hikikomori, which means I don't leave my room uh, very often. Uh, I am uh, a musician. I spend a lot of time making music. I have a YouTube channel, which you're watching now. And uh, I do a lot of other things as well. Uh, so I thought I would give a, a quick response to from a different perspective because uh, I think one of my biggest problems with CGP Grey in general is that uh, he tends to take not that I, this is not a hate this is not a hate video. I just want to make that very clear. I uh, definitely think CGP Grey is a very technically proficient YouTuber. He he makes some of the, the tightest scripts and the, the best executed visuals that, that, that you can find. Uh and and the ideas he explores are generally interesting. Some some of his videos are I, I really love. Some of them I really disagree with, but I still appreciate them from a production standpoint. But anyway, let's get into this one. This uh this one about lockdown productivity. Now now I actually already made a video about this. Uh, if you go on my channel, uh, I it was called. Uh, I've completely forgotten what it was called. Tips stuck inside. Tips from a professional shut in, I believe. Uh, so you can watch that if you want my my a more full perspective on on my opinions on on what to do when you're inside, because uh, so so basically my problem with this video, my main problem with this video can be can be summed up with a. Uh, CGP Grey assumes that the way he experiences the world is the way everyone experiences the world. And the things that are good or bad for his well-being must necessarily, or even the things that are good or bad for most people's well-being, must necessarily be the, the things that are good or bad for everyone's well-being. Now, this is just not true. Everyone's brain is very different, especially if you have a a neurodivergent brain like my own or many of my friends uh, a lot of these things that 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 someone on the neurotypical side of things might find to be uh, self-evident are actually not self-evident at all so the first thing I don't like about this video I, I'm sorry because there's gonna be there's there is negative I am this is a critique but there are also plenty of things I agree with so just bear with me please uh, so the first thing I don't like about this video is the the whole analogy of the spaceship. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, like, most people will find this cool, but for me, this is a very, um, it's a very Reddit thing to do. I, I know that that may seem like a strange insult, but, uh, this is a, this, it, it doesn't necessarily feel like, uh, it, it sort of feels like someone is intruding on my space, as in being stuck inside all the time is something I am intricately familiar with. Uh, I have ag agoraphobia. I don't like, I, but so I'm, I, for me, this feels like uh, someone is talking down to me. Like my, it, it feels like, like someone's treating my intelligence uh, like a, like I'm a child. Also, at Star Wars, bad, <laughs> read it. Uh, so this is the first, this is my first real problem with the content though. This, sorry, this is a really badly structured beginning to a video because that was a really petty critique. Uh, that's just personal preference. But my first problem with this is is this idea of, of separating, out, separating out all the different sectors of, of your life, right? Uh, he has a diagram at some point, let me, here we go. So you got the the exercise, the the sleep, the couch, and the creativity. Uh, here's what I don't like about sep. There's basically the idea of separating these out, is is. It just doesn't necessarily make sense. It, in fact, it's antithetical to some other productivity uh, tips that people give people and stuff that I find works for me. For example, uh a great productivity tip if you're trying to learn an instrument or actually any skill is to just always have it within arm's reach this is why i have my bass guitar right next to me right here uh because that way if you get even the slightest urge to pick it up and practice you can instantly go and do it 
this regimenting your your yourself is very comes from the perspective of someone who is incredibly who's just more okay with that not everyone is completely satisfied having their life regimented uh myself i cannot stick to a schedule i don't uh i i don't enjoy, i i fu- my brain is not going to be in the same place every day and if i try and force it into the same place every day the same mindset every day i end up burning out if i if i say every day i'm going to spend i've tried it before when i was working on uh albums uh if i say i'm going to spend the time from 9 till 5 every day working on music i burn out and uh cuz i'm sometimes it's it's 9 and i'm like i don't want to make music right now i want to do something else uh, uh I don't like it. I don't like this way of doing things. Uh, it, and I think a lot of people don't like this way of doing things. This this works for some people. If we want to use the neurotyping chart, this would work. I'm assuming this would work better for, for more linear thinkers. But me as a very lateral thinker, uh, my brain is always in 20 places at once. I, I can quite easily be watching something and practicing scales on the bass at the same time and at the same time be on a discord call with a friend and that's not and I'm I'm doing all of the I mean the scale is a mindless activity but I can easily watch something and be on a discord call at the same time and take completely absorb both things uh I've done that many times this this assumes that you're someone who who very much likes to focus on doing one thing at a time and has a very nice schedule like scheduling is easy for you and this also goes into the sleep thing gray's uh, uh, analogy of or gray's idea of sleeping uh, making sure that you wake up at the same time every day with an alarm um some people's brains don't work like that again this this video just takes into account only the most neurotypical mindset uh, my brain, for example, I cannot keep a consistent sleep schedule. If I, even if I put an alarm on at the same time every day, like I used to do for school back in the day or for work back in the day, uh, I would have an alarm on for the same time. But the times that I would fall asleep would be wildly different. It it never actually settles into a rhythm. There's actually a name for the the sleep disorder I have, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, uh, it's not diagnosed. It's this is a self diagnosis, but I, I'm. Basically, uh, the time I spend awake every day is normally, uh, it's a mismatch. So I, I would normally stay awake for an hour longer than I, sh- than I should do sleeping. If I went to sleep an hour earlier, I would just lie in bed for an hour not being able to sleep. So I never am able to get into a consistent sleep cycle. I always move over the place. And according to Gray, this is a bad thing. But he never actually gives any reason as to why it's a bad thing. I am, I would say I'm both more productive and happier now that I am in a state, have been in a state for a while where I can sleep and wake up whenever I like. If I want to take a three hour nap and then not sleep for 24 hours, I can do that. There's, and th- that makes me happy and it makes me more productive as well because some days I want to stay up all night because I'm working on a project and don't want to stop. Uh, there's no reason to force yourself into the same system of control that you're used to from work when you're no longer beholden to to your work to the same work schedule um, but uh, there are also many things I like in this video I just want to make sure I balance this so one of the things I really like in this video is the emphasis on creating I've been trying to t- tell people this for years the, the only way you to stay sane if you're a shut in is to to be creating and learning skills as much as possible for me this comes naturally and i don't understand how people cannot do it uh but i understand there are plenty of people who don't do it naturally and may need to force themselves to do it but for me um naturally i, I would get bored if i only did passive activities i can't just stay watching netflix all day uh i don't even watch all I use Netflix for is to watch Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, and I've already seen every episode a thousand times. Um, 
so making sure to spend this time learning new skills is not just good for the self-improvement angle but it, it's the only thing that will keep you sane uh well it's not the only thing but it, it definitely helps uh, it's it's great it's it you have to push your mind you have to you have to keep your mind active uh, i talked about this in my shut in video i talked about this in my horrible video uh, wages in a kg um you have to you have to it's the, well i have to stay constantly creating and i i mentioned that i'm a musician but but i'm not just a musician i, I i'll teach myself skills and maybe not even skills like for example just reading a book or even like recently i've been studying up on ancient religion uh i've been i've been reading up reading some some ancient religious texts i've been reading the corpus hermeticum i've been reading uh the gospel of thomas and i've been reading the rig veda uh i'm not i i mean my religious beliefs are not even relevant regardless of what i'm reading i it's just fascinating uh and I think that leads perfectly into my next critique of the video, which is the separation between what he calls the couch and and the productivity zone. Uh, ask any writer how they got good at writing, and the answer is they read a fuck ton of books. Ask any filmmaker how they got good at filmmaking. The answer is they watched loads of films. You, it's just it. This I, this comes from the the work mindset of of uh, work time and leisure time being something completely separate. In reality, I am strongly against the separation of work and play. I st st strongly believe that these they should be intimately integrated. Um, so, for example, something that may seem like a, a casual activity to one person or from the outside may seem like a, a, a leisure time is actually a productivity time, depending on how you do it. I, I think a lot of people, if they are just given the opportunity to lay on the couch, they will watch mind numbing things. They will default to that. Whereas for me, I am very much a database minded person. I like to database things. I'm autistic. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, I'm very much into things like, uh, anime. I'm very much into anime. For me, if I'm watching anime, if I, if I watch a whole, a whole show in a day, that doesn't feel like wasted time. That doesn't feel like leisure time. That this is like, it feels like productivity time because I am databasing it. While I'm watching it, I am databasing that piece of media in relation to all the previous anime I've watched I can see oh it was made by it was directed by this person uh and I also like this person's I don't know like let's say what I'm watching um I don't know I'm watching Steam Boy Steam Boy is an anime film that almost no one cares about actually that's not true but it was directed by Katsuhiro Otome who also directed Akira and everyone loves Akira. Akira is one of the anime that non-anime fans know. Uh, and yet no one knows about, or people don't seem to talk up Steam Boy, despite it being, in terms of animation quality, equally as good as Akira, if not maybe even better. Uh, so I can, I can database, I've seen this Steam Boy film, which is an incredible film, I can database it. Okay, it's Akira, and then Akira is also a manga, and uh, you know it's it's all this 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 these inter within cells interlinked within cells interlinked, um, or reading a book is reading a book productivity or leisure, because when you're everyone knows reading is very healthy, it's very good for your brain. But is it is it leisure? Or is it productivity? What about a non-fiction book? What if I'm reading, I don't know, some non some non-fiction book? Is that is that leisure or is that productivity? What about if I'm if I'm playing just playing guitar, just sort of jamming or something? Just is that is that productivity because I'm practicing my instrument, or is it leisure? 
these things are the the separation between these two elements is is complete nonsense. I don't I don't think it should exist. I don't think you should have to feel guilty. But at the same time, I do think many people who aren't used to this lifestyle will default to to um recovery mode. What do I mean by that? If you spend all day at work and you're working hard, uh, I've had multiple jobs in the past. So I'm not a uh, like completely oblivious to all of this um if you if you spend all day at work when you get home you don't want to watch something that's going to be really challenging intellectually you want to chill out and watch something that will just help your brain and your body recover from a hard day at work uh and because that's the way most people learn to consume media uh they don't have a precedent when they're suddenly freed from that and so they default into the same consumption habits and then they end up uh just like lazing on the couch because they they don't have the the skill that it takes to actually to database or to to watch something that might be more challenging um now i say that from my perspective as someone who is naturally attracted to to like art house and avant-garde media in general since a pretty young age i think if you're not naturally attracted to those things i it might be much harder for you and i'm i'm not really sure i can't necessarily give advice to that sort of person but if you are a, like i think that's the best way to do it is just to work your way up to that sort of thing like uh if you have to read a book even not all books are created equal like a uh, if you're like oh, I'm I have all this time off from quarantine I'm going to read a book and you read some young adult novel you read I don't know whatever's popular Hunger Games or something is that still popular yes you may as well be watching a marvel film you're not doing anything to to help yourself there but if you're if you and this isn't this doesn't come from some place of pretension where certain media is actually better than others objectively I don't believe in objective superiority of any sort of media uh i i'm talking about in terms of keeping your brain active in terms of mental health it is literally better for you the more stuff you have to think about if you if you if you watch uh utina if you watch the Rev- revolutionary girl utina there's a million different thematic elements and visual elements to keep that your mind is going to keep worrying about if you watch um book of bantora your mind is completely taken up by just trying to figure out what is actually going on because the plot is so complicated whereas if you if you watch uh um <laughs> this is whatever's popular tiger king on netflix right that show is made for a very very broad audience and is completely supposed to be unchallenging and therefore you may think about a couple of things like did that guy really kill that guy i know i haven't seen it did the ti- i know i only know from second hand accounts like you're good. what you're going to be thinking about is um should tigers really be held in captivity by these incompetent people the answer is obviously no there's nothing to think about there did that person kill that other person probably but there's no evidence to to say anything uh it doesn't that's that's not something that's going to get you to learn about the about yourself or about the world uh there's lots of i i would i mean there's if you want recommendations of what to do watch my video about a, a tip from a professional shotgun um so i'm i'm kind of getting off track here this is supposed to be a critique of this cgp gray video uh Yeah, this is the biggest problem I have is that this that, that you, you have to have creation completely separated from everything else. Everything's interlinked. Create creativity is I mean, perhaps if your creativity is something like um coding, I don't really know that much about programming, but for me, programming is I mean, I haven't really done any programming, so I can't say, but but when I'm like messing around with Linux, for example, like changing my i don't know changing my theme my i3 theme or something 
and I'm going in there editing the HTML or the CSS, I mean. Uh, again, it's not. I know it's not coding. Don't come at me in the comments. That it isn't something that I'm forcing myself to do. It isn't. It's it's just something that's acted actually interesting. And if I want to have music on in the background while I'm doing it, I can do that. Listening to music or watching a film shouldn't be something completely leisurely. It should be something that actually activates your almonds. It should be. You should listen to when you listen to music. I don't see how you can, I don't understand how most people can listen to something and not think about it, unless you've already, the only time that can happen to me is if I've listened to it a thousand million times already, if I, if like, if I've listened, if I've listened to an album a hundred times and I put it on, I can understand that being just sort of white noise, but how can you put on a song and not think about all the implications, how can you not see the, I mean, Maybe this is just very much a me thing, but my brain naturally does without, I didn't even know that this was what it was called until like a month ago when I started looking into it. My brain does natural post-structuralist analysis on everything I consume. Like when I consume a song, my brain starts worrying about all the symbols and signifiers that the, that the song contains. Uh, but I'm not, and I'll analyzing it from a music theory perspective or something, but from from this other cult, cultural, so, sociological ish, philosophical I guess, perspective. Where I'm I'm. That just happens automatically. So, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. This video is not very good. I'm um. I've just I'm trying to trying to talk about this CTP gray thing, but I just keep getting distracted. Uh, the thing about video games is that there's nothing wrong with video games. Just like everything, it depends which games you're playing. But I also don't know that much about games. I don't. I don't play that many games. But there are certainly some games that require more thought than others. But even then, I. I mean, maybe something like Call of Duty or. A game that's more like a movie, like, I haven't played it, but Last of Us 2, or a game that is mostly grinding, or like something like an MMORPG, or, or an RPG, like a JRPG. That's probably a bad idea, but a game that requires active skill, again, I don't play that many games, so this is a, probably a bad, a bad, uh, not my area of expertise. But play a Zaktronics game, right? That's what you should be doing. Everyone should get into Zaktronics, Zaktronics games right now. Or, personally, I'm, I play a lot of Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Counter-Strike 1.6. Um, and the reason for that is that they are, they are tactical shooters, even though I feel like that game is a bit pretentious. Gives it a little more credit. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a click on people's heads game. Uh, but still, Counter Strike it has a lot of tactics in it. Especially, I like to play Wingman recently, which is two v twos. That it's all about kind of trying to get in your opponent's head and sneak around the map. That's the stuff I really like about Counter Strike. Not not the, the the aiming. I suck at aiming. I don't really care about it. I I just care about trying to outthink my opponent. Um, and it's important, I think, to play against real people if you can. Uh, it's even that is a sense of of human interaction. Uh, did I have any other big problems? So the zoning things off was a problem. The the separation was a problem. The sleep was a problem. Um, Mm, I think that was it. I mean, the other thing was the only thing I haven't talked about is exercise. He's probably right. I don't exercise as much as I should. Um, you should probably exercise if if you want to keep yourself sane. Uh, personally, I hate exercise and and I cannot force myself to do it. So I just had a strange noise. I cannot force myself to exercise. Um, but if you if you are someone who can do that. 
It, I don't like the way he says exercise is non-optional because he does mention that at the beginning. He says he says you have to do physical activity. Exercise is non-optional. I don't think exercise is non-optional. I think uh, it depends on your diet. I eat only two meals a day, one of which is usually two eggs on toast, uh, which is not particularly... I normally would consume under 2,000 calories a day, but because I don't exercise very much, that's basically... I mean, I'm actually putting on a little bit of weight. I, I need to start exercising more, but... Uh, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not a, a me justifying my own poor behavior, my own self-destructive behavior. You, you need to exercise. That is, that is true. But I don't like the way he says that it's non, non-optional. I feel like he's being very, he, 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 th- he thinks he's better than other people with that. That's, that sounds, that came off more aggressive than I meant. He, it's a bit preachy. This whole his whole channel is a bit preachy. There's my problem with CGP Grey. He's he's very preachy. Like the rules for rulers video, which I think is complete rubbish, is very preachy. Uh, he's a very preachy guy, but you know I still love him. I love this the three D animation in this video. It looks really great. Um. Yeah, it does look pretty great. Maybe I can figure out why why this, this video seems to read it. It's because the the it's a uh, this whole metaphor is for people who are unable to see the world in any context other than through the pop media that they consume, and therefore it's like here's how you treat uh, here's how you do a do an adult here's how you do adulting, you know that fucking Reddit bullshit. Uh, it's like, yeah, here's, you can think of yourself like a spaceship, isn't it cool? Like, I'm a fucking child, I'm not a child, I do watch cartoons all the time, I do love anime, and I, I do have childish interests, but I am an adult, I can, you can just tell me this without having to frame it in some sort of Rick and Morty framing device, epic Reddit moment. Uh... Like, yeah, you could just say it to me. You could just say it. Why don't you just say it? It, look, it looks cool. It's an interest. It, I get it. It's like a narrative device. But just to, just tell me the thing. You don't have to, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. All right, that's the video.